Hello, today we're going to talk about um, structure 1.4, sections 1, 2, and 3. Um, and it's all about the mole. And then um, going from that to formula mass and then molar mass. All right, so let's talk about um, what the mole is and how we're going to count different particles. The mole is a unit of counting. Um, we used to say it was an a SI unit for the amount of a substance, but it has been more specifically now defined as for counting a number of things. So the mole um, is one mole. We abbreviated MOL, um, which I think is a little silly because it's just one letter shorter. But um, it's equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd things. Um, so it's like saying uh, one dozen things is 12 things. Um, it's just like a one mole has a meaning that means it's a lot larger number. And we call this, um, this is called Avogadro's number, um, which in your data booklet is abbreviated NA, like that, Avogadro's number. And um, it is in your data booklet. You don't have to memorize it, but uh, we wind up using it very frequently, so it might get stuck in your memory just because. Um, it's also why we celebrate Mole Day on October 23rd, um, although some people will celebrate it in June because of, it's the sixth month. Um, and then the types of particles that we're counting in chemistry could be a couple of different things. Sometimes we're talking about the number of atoms of a substance. We could be talking about for ionic compounds, the number of formula units. We could be talking about the number of distinct molecules for molecular substances. We could be talking about a number of ions, a number of photons. Um, Anything that there's going to be a huge number of them, we can count very simply using the mole. Okay, so we can convert back and forth between particles and um, the number of moles using Avogadro's number, and it looks something like this. So let's say I have five moles of, I don't know, water, water molecules. Um, we know that 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules are in one mole. Um, dimensional analysis, the moles cancel. So you would just multiply by five, um, multiply five times Avogadro's number to get the number of molecules in five moles. And you get uh, three times 10 to the 24th molecules of water to one sig fig. You can also go the other way if I have um, particles. Let's say I have 2.51 times 10 to the 19th I don't know, ions of H plus. I know that there are 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd ions for every one mole. You can divide, divide by Avogadro's number now, and I get uh, 4.17 times 10 to the negative fifth moles of hydrogen ions. Okay, so now we need to start relating this to mass. So every atom has a different number of protons and neutrons, and the different numbers of protons and neutrons are going to lead it to have a different mass. Um, the electrons contribute, but very um, a, lot, a lot less than the protons and neutrons. So um, we can think about it having different number of nucleons, so different mass for each of these different atoms. So it's become convenient that we use carbon as our baseline, and specifically we want to use carbon-12. Remember that um, atoms can have different isotopes with different numbers of neutrons. For example, that carbon can have a carbon-14 isotope, which has two additional neutrons. Um, but we use carbon-12 um, as our baseline. And we say that um, carbon-12 has a particular mass, and one twelfth of the mass of carbon-12 is equal to one atomic mass unit, one AMU. And this is just a relative mass that we can use to very easily compare atoms to each other. Um, we could calculate the mass in kilograms if we wanted to using the mass of protons, neutrons, electrons, uh, but this is convenient for us. Okay. Um, 
So if you were to find the AMU, read that better, the AMU for an element, we call that the relative atomic mass. And we um, abbreviate that as AR, so atomic mass relative. You can also find the number of AMU for a compound where you add up all of the elements that make up that compound. And we call that the relative formula mass. And we use the abbreviation M sub R. Um, and we'll practice doing that, uh, calculating the formula mass. I do want to remind you that because isotopes have different masses, like we were talking about the um, carbon 12 and carbon 14, and since both of those exist in nature, they're both contributing to the um, weighted average atomic mass. Um, this is covered at really in depth in a different uh, section, uh, but just really briefly, that means that our weighted average is on the periodic table. So like for carbon, it's 12.01, because the small amount of carbon-14 atoms drives that mass higher than just 12. Um, so whatever you see on the periodic table, that is an average of the isotopes of the element. So when you look at your periodic table in your data booklet, they give the um, atomic masses, the relative atomic masses, and those are the weighted averages. You can also add those up to find the formula mass. So let's say I wanted to find um, the mass of H2O. I would need to do 2 times the hydrogen relative atomic mass, which is 1.008. And we just have one of the oxygen, which its relative mass is 16. And so we get here um, 2.016, 16, and then you can add them together to get your overall AMU, and that is your um, relative formula mass for water. Um, if you want to be like the most accurate, you can use all of the digits that are available to you in the data booklet. Um, it's very rare that I see people go out to the thousandth place for hydrogen. Most people just round it to one. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind when you're going through your calculations that um, the most accurate value is going to be using all of the digits available to you in the data booklet. So now let's connect this to molar mass. So molar mass, um, we use M to represent molar mass. And it is defined as the grams um, in one mole of a substance, or to rephrase it, it's the grams for every 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd items of that substance, whether it's an um, atom or molecule or formula or whatever. Um, so we're kind of connecting it all together with molar mass. The formula for molar mass is given in your data booklet as well. It's written like this, N equals M over M, lowercase and uppercase, where N is the number of moles, use N for moles. M, lowercase M is the mass in grams. And uh, uppercase M is the molar mass. And the units for that is grams per mole. Um, so to make this work. So we can use this to convert, and let's do some practice converting between moles and mass and particles. So I want you guys to think of moles as like your central um, unit. Um, so you can go from mass to moles using the molar mass, and you can go from moles to particles and back using Avogadro's number. Um, so if you can keep that in your brain, then you can always figure out um, the mass of the particles for anything. Um, so let's do a quick example. If I have something like um, three grams of water, because I already calculated the mass of water on the previous on a previous slide, the molar mass for water um, in AMU is 18.016. 
And what's convenient about that is because that is its um, relative formula mass. That means its molar mass is the same thing, but in grams per mole, which is nice. So you have your um, atomic mass and your molar mass are the same, just different units, because we're referring to different numbers of things. This would be for one particle, and this would be for 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles. So to make this work, um, I want to put the 18.016 grams on the bottom per mole. This part, the per mole, goes on the top. That way the grams can cancel. And I could stop there and find out just the number of moles of water. But let's say I want to find the molecules. I know that one mole um, is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. And so I can cancel out moles now because it's on the bottom. And you can calculate all at once the 3 divided by 18.016 times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And then to one sig fig, it's 1 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of water. Um, so 3 divided by 18.016 times Avogadro's number gives us this. And this was just one sig fig in our problem, so that's why I used one sig fig in our answer here. Let's look at a couple more examples. Um, how many hydrogen atoms are in 0.45 moles of C2H5OH, um, which is acetic acid or vinegar? So 0.45 moles of our C2H5OH. Um, this is a good example because it's asking for hydrogen atoms. There are six hydrogen atoms in the whole compound. So I want to take care of that first. In one C2H5OH, there are six hydrogens. So now if I were to just multiply by six, I would get the moles of um, hydrogen, which is 2.7 moles of hydrogen. But it's not asking us for moles, um, so I can go ahead and continue on moles of hydrogen. And to find the atoms, I need to use Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms for over one mole. Moles can cancel. And um, to two sig figs, I got 1.6 times 10 to the 24th atoms of hydrogen. Okay, so our last example, um, what is the mass in grams? Uh, 4.32 times 10 to the 24th molecules of H2SO4. And that's sulfuric acid. So I can start with that 4.32 times 10 to the 24th molecules. And then to get from molecules to moles, I can use Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules for every one mole. Um, remember, you can't go directly from molecules to grams. You have to convert to moles first. Now, I could go ahead and solve and find the moles, but I'm going to put all three steps together. So to get then from moles to grams, I need to find the molar mass. So I need to add up hydrogen um, two hydrogens, one sulfur, and four oxygens. Hydrogen's mass is uh, 1.008, sulfur is 32.06, and oxygen is 16. And when I add all of that up, I get a 98.076. That's how many grams are in one mole. And then when you're multiplying and dividing, you take your molecules divided by Avogadro's number times the molar mass, and you get um, 7.04 times 10 to the second power, um, or you could just say a 704 um, grams. Either way, you're using the three sig figs. Okay, so this links uh, forward a bit to structure 3.1 when we're looking at um, some of our periodic trends. Uh, atoms increase in mass as their position descends in the periodic table. Um, so as you continue forward, you get they get heavier and heavier. What properties might be related to this trend? Um, so you might see things like, um, well, the, the reason for this trend is that it's having more protons and more neutrons in their nucleus. 
and it's always placed in order from the least number of protons to the most number of protons as you go around. Um, so as they're increasing in mass, um, things like um, ionization energy might increase as well, um, especially if you're looking at elements in the same period. You're going to have a higher ionization energy, there's more protons, stronger coulombic attractions. Um, so there's a lot of things that are related here. Now this also links um, to reactivity 2.1, uh, which is on stoichiometry. Um, so how can we use molar masses with chemical equations to determine the masses of products of a reaction? Um, so in stoichiometry, you need to use a balanced chemical equation and use those coefficients to be able to convert between um, reactants or products um, of a different substance. Um, but that's why you have to have a balanced chemical equation to be able to determine that.